Yeehaw class, so this week we're tackling protein synthesis, and here's the gist. So we talked about how DNA copies itself in order for us to heal and to reproduce, but you can't actually carry out that job without making the protein that makes you. So this is the story how that works. Now I got a beard on the background of this slide, and here's why. The beard is made out of hairs, obviously, and your hairs are small strands of protein. So if you were to look at this with really powerful technology, you could actually see the protein structure that makes your hair. It also makes your lips, your teeth. It makes all of you. It's just in different types. Now, if you rewind the clocks back several thousand years and go to ancient Greece, people like this guy Homer told these really long stories just by mouth. They just memorized them. It's pretty crazy. And what happened was they would tell these really long stories and people liked them so much that they decided to write them. So if we take stories like the Odyssey or the Iliad, which you'll read in high school, Homer spoke that just by memory, and it's really long. So somebody wrote it down in ancient Greece. We had a scribe that wrote his tale so it could be passed down through generations. Then what happened after that? Well, we don't speak ancient Greek. We speak English. So we had to have somebody translate it, and that's how protein synthesis works. DNA is like Homer. And in order to have his information made into something that we can understand, we have to have it written down in RNA, and then the RNA has to be translated into proteins, which is the language that our body speaks. So if we go down here, let's recap real quick. RNA, he's going to play an important role in protein synthesis. What are the key differences? First of all, we've got one strand. So if we pick orange for RNA, and if we pick... Uh, red for DNA, remember that DNA has two strands, and it's connected by the nucleotide base pairs like that. RNA just has one strand, and it doesn't pair up to itself like DNA does. It only pairs up to DNA and helps it out for certain reasons. So the first one that we did last week was how it's DNA's wingman when it replicates. Well, in this time, it's going to be its messenger. But we'll get to that later. Now, one strand for RNA. Two, it's got a different sugar. They're both five carbon sugars. They look like pentagons. Uh, it's just a little bit different. And the other key difference is that RNA has a U instead of a T. Okay, RNA has a uracil, but all you need to remember that it has a U. So whenever we pair an A, in DNA to an RNA strand, you're going to pair it up with a U instead of a T. Now, three steps of DNA replication. First, helicase unzips the DNA. Okay, unzip, break it up. That's step one. Step two is that RNA primer serves as DNA's wingman and keeps it company while it's waiting for a new partner. And then DNA polymerase finds our wingman and mutual friend RNA primer. And then it links up to it and makes a new partner strand for the DNA. How does DNA make our proteins? So that's why we should care about protein synthesis. So the point is, it takes the instructions, makes it into proteins, and it makes us. Here's some different examples. This guy's Black George. He's the reason we say yeehaw in class, because he's the guy I used to hang out with and party and make root beer and tell stories. He would say yeehaw. So anyway, I have Black George's skin protein right there. I've got his beard protein there. And then if we look over here, we have Megan Klingenberg, which, who is a, an absolute soccer boss. Awesome defender. It's amazing to watch her play. Anyway, she's got muscle protein right there. And who can forget eye protein? So if we keep going, well, what's protein synthesis? Here's how it works. First, we got this thing called the central dogma. What does that mean? All it means is this. DNA goes to RNA, which goes to protein. And more specifically, DNA translates, excuse me, DNA transcribes the RNA. So we had Homer speaking the story. That's like DNA. But we got to have it passed down. We got to be able to write it. So RNA basically writes DNA's message. And then we got to translate what RNA is saying. It's because we don't understand ancient Greek, right, and the metaphor. So what happens is we have to have somebody translate it into our body's language, which is that of proteins. So DNA transcribes RNA, which translates into proteins. 
Hence, the two steps are step one, transcription. Step two is the translation. Here's a prokaryotic cell diagram. The basic gist is DNA goes to RNA, which goes to protein. We've established that. However, we're not made out of prokaryotic cells. So you'll see that there's no nucleus in it. This is what I want to focus on, however. This is eukaryotic cells. So this right here is the nucleus. Okay, U means true. Karyote means nucleus. So it means true nucleus. It's there. Just to remember that. The pre-mRNA pre right here, don't worry about it. It's just an extra detail. You don't need to know it. We got our instructions right there. Okay, there's the guy telling the story, DNA. But then we got to write it down. So then we contract RNA, messenger RNA. RNA, M for messenger, is going to link up to the DNA, and then it's going to take that message out of the nucleus. And it's going to find a ribosome where it's going to be translated into protein, which is our body's language. Pathway, central dogma, recap. DNA to RNA to protein. But the key point of this slide is that there's two different types. So we need the messenger to take the message, okay? But the tRNA, T for transfer, is going to transfer the proteins to the mRNA. And we're going to see how that works in a second. Transcription. So here's DNA, okay? It's telling the story. This is what you're going to look like. This is how you're going to act. This is what you're going to be able to do. The messenger RNA comes and it translates the message, okay? It's all the same except for those U's, remember? RNA doesn't have T's, it has U's, so it's going to pair up a U with each A. Then it's going to take that out of the nucleus. So, we've established that RNA, mRNA carries DNA's message, right? So this type of RNA is called messenger RNA, M for messenger, You are made out of eukaryotic cells, so transcription is going to happen in the nucleus. Inside the nucleus is where it happens. And then mRNA is going to take DNA's message out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm so it can find a ribosome. Let's pretend that the ribosome is like a library. So if you want to learn a different language, you're going to go get books to understand it, right? And the library is going to have them. So let's say you got to go to the library to be able to translate stuff. And ribosome is going to be our library. So translation happens where? It has to happen in the ribosome. So what happens is when the mRNA, our messenger RNA, is translated into protein. And amino acids are the pieces that build that protein. And you're going to see those in a sec. A way to look at it is it's like we can't build a Lego castle without Lego bricks. So mRNA can only be read three nucleotides at a time. And each trio, each triplet of nucleotide bases is called the codon. What does that look like? It looks like this. So each one of those letters is a nucleotide and the triplet of them, the three of them together, is a codon. And our codon example here is AUG. That's like a code that the tRNA will translate into a protein. Here's what it looks like in terms of a picture. tRNA kind of looks like a T, to help you remember that. And the T is for transfer, remember that. So here's where our protein would be bound to on the tRNA. And that's our messenger guy. So our messenger RNA found a ribosome outside of the nucleus, and it kind of swam over and linked up right through it. It kind of looks like a hamburger bun. And then if the ribosome is our library, tRNA goes there. So this guy is going to go to that ribosome and link up and read the mRNA and translate it. How does it do that? It reads what's called a codon, which we established is 
a pair of, or excuse me, a trio of bases. So it's three bases. And it attaches to it with its complementary anticodon. What happens is the amino acid's just going to kind of camp out there until another one comes along, like in this picture. So mRNA, we're in the ribosome. Here's our first codon right here. So the tRNA attaches to it, and it attaches the approach. It translates this message into an amino acid, which is a basically a Lego brick of a castle of proteins. And it bonds to another amino acid. Only when you can bond it to one amino acid to another does this tRNA take a hike. So when this guy right here, when he lands and they bond, this guy is going to take a hike. It's going to leave. And then another one's going to come and attach to that one. If you look here, how are we bonding here? So A goes to U, A goes to U, and U goes to A. So in this example, C is going to go to G, C is going to go to G, and A is going to go to U. Another metaphor, another way to look at it is proteins are like sentences. So each word that makes the sentence is called an amino acid. That's the piece of the protein. There's only 20 possible amino acids to choose from. So in our vocab, in our language, there's only 20 possible words. And all those words are three letters long. So here's an example of a sentence that we have. We have AUG, CGG, and ACC. The amino acid sequence would be translated to read that. And here's how that works. So just bear with me. Let's go down to the next slide, and we'll discuss how this works. So if we look at this picture, we have AUG as our first codon. It's real easy. So first we find A. Right there, there's A. So we narrow that down. That means we have only this column to choose from. Excuse me, that row to choose from. Then we go to our next one, which is a U. So we find U up here for the second base. And we go down that way. And then we find a G, which is over here on the third base side. So where's G? It's right there. So we go through this column, and our man is right there. So you just cross the first, the second, and the third base, and you get your amino acid. It's a really long word, so we just take the first three letters. So our amino acid would be translated to read M-E-T. And we'll do an activity about this. Uh, tomorrow so you guys can get a better idea and practice more of this but at AUG the codon is translated to the amino acid AA stands for amino acid here's another picture of mRNA and so this is how our message starts out okay DNA transfers the message to RNA and they write it down like this but we don't understand that language, so we have to translate it into a language we understand, which is this, our proteins. And each one of these, that I'm, each one of these circles is an amino acid. And when you put these together, you get a strand of protein. Here's another visual about the whole process. DNA to RNA to protein. Polypeptide, I know that looks weird. All that means is strand of protein. Here's what you need to know from this slide. DNA is first transcribed into RNA. So the guy, DNA, is telling the story. we got to pass it down. So we transcribe it. We need to write it down because he's just saying it by words, but we need to write it. So we write it in the RNA, and then, well, it's in a different language, so we got to translate it to a language our body understands, which is protein. So it's first transcribed, and then it's translated. Step one, step two. Central dogma is basically what we just said, so DNA to RNA to protein. You need to know the steps of transcription, and then it happens in the nucleus. You also need to know the steps of translation, and then it happens in the cytoplasm. 
And it also more specifically happens in a ribosome in the cytoplasm. And know the difference between mRNA and tRNA. Remember that M is messenger. And T is transfer. And you need to know that a codon is three nucleotides at a time, and it translates into the amino acids. Hope that helps. If any of this is confusing, write down questions and come to Thursday's class ready to ask them so we can go over it in more detail. Again, as we practice this, this should get more easy to understand. Hope that helps. Thanks for listening.